Virgo in the 10th house, Virgo in the midheaven. All right, Sagittarius rising. Let's get right into it. Now, the most important thing here, Mercury. We back to another Mercury ruled 10th house. All right, last time we spoke about Mercury ruled 10th house is when we were talking about Gemini in the 10th house. All right, so now we're looking at it from the feminine perspective of Mercury, which is Virgo, the earth sign. Shout out to my Virgo. Shout out to all my earth placements. All right, so. When we look at Mercury being the rulership over your fourth, uh, your 10th house, okay, being the house lord of your 10th house, regardless of all the themes and different things that's associated with Virgo that may manifest into something in, within your career, right? Something uh, associated with health, you know, associated with culinary arts, associating with, ma uh, associated with management, finances of some type of shape or form, helping others manage something, you know, uh, wellness, uh, uh, all these different Virgo like themes that can naturally influence an area. These are natural things that can influence your 10th house. Just having Virgo there. A lot of you guys are educators. All right. Um, a lot of you guys are in the health community or if it's not a part of your career, you may be associated with that when it comes into, you know, your peers and in the workspace, maybe your diet, how you look at health, this, that, and the third, your lifestyle, certain practices, your regimen in some type of shape or form. Now, this is, the energies that may be displayed, you know, when it comes into developing your social status, it, uh, navigating your career path, uh, you know, anything that you're building, branding, trying to market or advertise, these things can naturally, you know, uh, be associated here, right? Because that's what the 10th house is, your social status, you know, career, reputation, but you are a Sag rising. Now, you guys may be a, uh, this... I may have some uh, Scorpio risings and I may have some Capricorn risings, all right? Yeah, I may have some Scorpio risings and some Capricorn risings, but for the most part, you know, this is going for, uh, you know, that Virgo in the 10th house. And you're gonna have Sagittarius in your first house. So your, your personal life ain't as managed and structured and formatted as Virgo energies is. Not your personal life. Not with Sagittarius here. Not with Ju not with Jupiter there. No. Your first house is way is a way way more quicker temperament here. All right. Way more quicker temperament. I always talk about when we talk about Jupiter influenced houses, there's gonna be a sense of unstableness because Jupiter's always expanding, experiences, new people, places and things, new experiences to teach you different things. Very adventurous, you know, type of vibrant ass uh influence it brings to whatever area it's at. So when we're talking about Sagittarius in the first house, this is why when it gets into the tenth house, right, which is the house that's dealing with your your life path, right? First, fourth, seventh, tenth. Okay. And this is what we're talking about when we talk about the signs of the 10th house is. We're talking about what you're experiencing navigating this part of your life path, not just what to do in career. All right. That's not the, the meat and potatoes of this video is what are you going to be experiencing navigating whatever it is that you're trying to do in career. So when we got Virgo here, you know, this house teaches Sagittarius how to get stabilized in the world, how to deal with reality in the world, how to deal with practicality, how to slow down, how to structure something, how to manage manage something all right the inspiration the creativity the vision that ain't that's that's what comes naturally for the Sagittarius rising it's fire it's fire mixed with Jupiter so the catching the inspiration and the belief and the faith that they could be somebody and that they could manifest and change something and experience this and and <laughs> explore and uplift and enlighten others that's what comes natural but those type of things gonna are gonna have to be you have to format uh, uh, environment. You have to format your approach. It's going to be all different type of practical things that need to be incorporated into all these personal uh, aspirations the Sagittarius may have. So that's why when we get to Virgo in that 10th house, all right, I feel like I said all that just to get to into, like, that was like almost like an intro or some shit. All right. But... When we get here, this is when the Sagittarius Rising got to learn. As creative and knowledgeable I am, I got to find the container for this shit. So that's one of the biggest things I want my Virgos in the 10th house people to, to leave this video knowing. 
you need to exercise and be aware of the times in life when God and universe is trying to show you, take this ability you have and put it in a container. What do I mean by a container? A container is fixed. A, a, you put food in there, that's it. Container can't, and it can't leak up out the container, can't move up out there. It is, it's, it's sealed, it's concealed. And when something's concealed, it's concentrated, all right? It's not floaty, it's not reckless. So it comes a lot of points in Sagittarius Rising's lives where it may be a talent, and it really may be something Jupiterian like, uh, which would be your knowledge, your wisdom, something you have experience with, credentials with, you're skilled with. This is all Jupiter like things, right? Jupiter can, you can, Jupiter wants to expand and teach and enlighten others. So anything that you have that can do that for others, it's a Jupiter like theme, Jupiter like attribute with Sagittarius is full of it in the first house, regardless if they're introverted or extroverted. Because you could be a Sagittarius rising, but depending on your sun and moon, depending on planet square in the first house, is how you may personally express yourself. We should know this by now, right, guys? All right. So when we get into uh, you know, when we get into putting Jupiter into a container, Virgo is the container. Virgo is the structure. It is the pattern. So it may be times where a Sagittarius rising person may naturally uh, uh, start to develop a reputation or social status for something in life based off of what they're personally into or whatever, right? Develop some type of reputation for themselves and they may, uh, you know, shoot themselves in the foot or, uh, you know, stagnate progress that they can make navigating career because they're, you know, being lackadaisical about practical steps. Like, damn, I forgot to LLC the, the business. Damn, I forgot to really count the numbers on what we really grossed and netted and what the profit was instead of just getting hype about all the sales coming in. Damn, I forgot to organize this or that's gonna be needed with Virgo in the 10th house. Let alone doing those practical things within the business, within the brand, within building the project, within formatting this group business, within whatever it is, let alone having to deal with those type of, uh, you know, uh, responsibilities when you're managing and building 10th house like things the start starting things starting the creative aspiration you know starting the business or brand that needs to, that's one of the most critical parts to have a for a sense of format a pattern a routine obviously whenever we start to whenever we choose to you know create something and build something in our life and when we're in the blueprint stages i always say this you you have to be you know uh intentional about how you're formatting something but you also have to be open to understanding a month three months six months a year two years down the line your format routine schedule that you first the genesis routine you develop for this business brand aspiration is not going to be the same things change everything transforms everything evolves even if it's, if it does stay the same it's going to evolve in its same way so you always have to be open to how things are going to have to be tweaked edited transformed in any journey of life because that's how life is all right so when we get into virgo in that 10th house i need my sag rises virgo in the 10th houses to understand sky be the limit up here but the sense of format is is it's that serious and and this is the thing here because it's ruled by mercury your format and blueprint gets critiqued you're you critical of it and others are critical of it you know so it's not even about me telling you don't you know <laughs> Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't overly critique your product, your business, your brand, how you're seen in the world, your presentation that you're trying to develop and express to others in the world who you're trying to be seen as. It's not even a fact. It's, I don't even, it's not about even about me having to tell y'all, you know, not to uh, not to get caught up in overly criticizing those things. It's more so how you handle the criticism from the external. How do you handle the criticism from the external? And a lot of that starts at home with your parents. Uh, Sagittarius risings, yup, yup. Cause you got that Pisces in the fourth house, but Pisces pulls on Virgo in the 10th house. So it's, it, it, the axes are connected. So a lot of this starts in the home environment for the uh, Sagittarius rising. Cause it's still Jupiter in the fourth house. So you guys are actually some of the rising signs When I talk about Sagittarius, Risings, y'all, from what I've seen, there's always a lesson to be learned from the first and the fourth house from our personal life to our uh, close home environment, parents, this, that, and the third, but it'd be a nice little connection between that first and the fourth. It'd be a nice little connection there because you still got Jupiter, 
So a sense, of, uh, it could be a sense of warmth, care, understanding in some type of shape or form. I have some Sagittarius uh, friends that are damn near brothers. Blood couldn't make us close. And they used to get uptight about the way their parents and whatnot, you know, disciplined them and showed love. And it was really not that tough. And they had a fit with that shit. So I'm like, yo, Sagittarius rises, did y'all be having it good in the home sometimes? And then act like your people's doing too much. Now, it is Pisces in the fourth house. So sometimes when it gets into your personal aspirations in life, it could be a lot of delusion going on. It could be some shit that your parents is gassing you, gassing you up to be. And you should have snapped out of it a long time ago and realized, I don't know why I let my, care, my parents <laughs> gaslight me into this career. <laughs> You know, so you got to be careful with you have so much Jupiter energy. And that's what happens with the Sag rising when it comes into uh, the the first house and the fourth house. But I'm just bringing that up because the influence of what you do in career, that critique, you get a more sensitive critique in the fourth house in comparison to what you really get in the tenth out in the world. But it starts in the fourth and it's really with the concern. I can't even say critique. It's more of a concern, you know? So when you're uh, having these early aspirations, like to do this, that, and whatever, you may have a parent, one of them, that uh, is very concerned. But, you know, also does give the constructive criticism in whatever type of way. And I think this is important to understand. Look back at how you dealt with these things as a child and see how you have evolved. Because if you feel like you haven't evolved dealing with that constructive criticism or that sense of concern for an aspiration coming out the home, you may be in a, a undeveloped state doing it in a career, being able to accept it in career. Cause I know you're going through it in the world with a Mercury rule temp, you're going through it. And y'all be, it's not even about, yeah. Like y'all got to make sure y'all not too critical of the result. Like, you put a song out. You was real hesitant, critical about putting a song out. Your close ones, this and that, people around you always been telling you good, you talented, whatever. But you finally take the steps to, uh, you know, set, take an initiative with something in your 10th house. I'm going to put this song out. Ah, this is what I want to be seen for. Here's my art. Here's my music. You can have all these comments. You could be getting more comments than you thought you was going to get more engagement on that song that you thought you was going to get. But those two comments that said this shit ass... I swear, Sash Rising, if you get caught up on them two ass comments, 40 comments, people saying good things, it was three comments said this shit is ass. Come on, man. Y'all get caught up on that. Mercury have y'all caught up on that. So see how you're overly critical? You're not criticizing the art no more, but the result that you got from the art, them two ass comments, is like, the fuck, these two niggas really think my shit ass? Ah, ah, like, yo, bros, come look at this shit. You see these two niggas saying this shit? I was like, what are you talking about, bro? You got 40 comments in two hours. This is your first all this shit about it. I think this shit going viral, nigga. He's <laughs> like, but nah, look at these two, three comments, though. Make sure Mercury don't get in the way in the tent house like that. Okay? You know, make sure you're not creating issues before they arrive in the tent house. All right? Now, now, about... Going back to saying you have to find a container for Jupiter in the 10th house. Jupiter and Mercury are very similar, right? They both like to teach in their different ways, okay? And, you know, they observe. Mercury likes to articulate and communicate. So the 10th house becomes a vessel for the knowledge in your first. Sag rising, Virgo in the 10th house. The 10th house becomes a vessel to articulate, communicate, advise, give guidance for the knowledge and wisdom accumulated in your first house. You guys are very knowledgeable people, right? You guys are very knowledgeable people. For what I know, very relatable people, right? Very relatable people, especially having a sign like Gemini in your seventh, right? And what is a very warm, social, connected sign like Sagittarius in the first, all right? So th there is a natural sense of charisma. There is a natural sense of you know, uh, people, person attributes here. Okay. Now, uh, you guys, ex once again, you guys experience a lot in the 10th house and you know, wherever Jupiter's ruled that is going to be some type of wisdom, knowledge being extracted here. You're going to be taught something there. So wherever you got Jupiter, Sagittarius, Pisces at in the chart, Cancer at in the chart, I know you got some wisdom for me in there, some type of shape or form, you know, cause there's a different, there's a little different emphasis on teaching when Jupiter presence is 
uh, is around. So, that's why I say a lot of y'all guys could be great educators. Because once y'all find some type of platform, position, you know, to allow your uh, a Mercury Rule 10th house to communicate, articulate any messages that it has about the knowledge it has, you know, this gravitates a lot of energy. This comes off as a sense of service, as, as not just service, obviously that, but a sense of management. It comes off as a sense of management for others receiving it. So you may be teaching somebody something, but they're receiving it as something that can help manage and structure them. Quote Virgo in the 10th house. You may realize with this placement, a lot of people seek your advice for things in, the, in that field in, the, in any ways. So that might be a reason why you even get intrigued to want to teach something or, or service something. You already get in it, it. Motherfuckers be interviewing your ass about the shit already in your personal life. So once again, I know we watch a lot of these. We want to understand things about the 10th house to help expand things dealing with career path, social status, making a mark with our presence in the world or just understanding how we're seen more. But at the, in the most simple state, it's your reputation, regardless if you're famous or not. So Virgo in the 10th house, you know, people are going to see you as somebody very informative, somebody very knowledgeable in some type of shape or form, somebody that knows what they're talking about when they deliver answers for questions, you know, know how to articulate things. Okay, so when situations are manifested in the 10th house, for you to be seen as that, to own that, possibly monetize that, monetize my information, monetize my knowledge and wisdom. It's the age of Aquarius, and we got too many portals to jump into to connect to others that don't know us. All right, we got to get with the times. We got to get with the times. In the 80s, it was play basketball or sell crack. Okay, that's all we had. <laughs> I was gonna be playing basketball either way. All right, I played basketball this lifetime. If I was in the '80s, I was gonna be. I was gonna sell crack. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to be nothing around that motherfucker. Right Just being honest with y'all, okay? But we ain't we ain't in them times no more. We ain't in them times no more. We gotta take advantage of what we got. We got portals to jump into. So our natural energies, our natural powers, our natural insight. You know, missions that we're supposed to be on that are, are involved with connecting, teaching others, shifting the vibration of this plane. We need to exercise all these resources we have to do this. Okay. So, because I, I, I emphasize this because as I've been doing the 10th house with the series videos, I always catch that intuitive feel that people are receiving this energy, understanding that they can connect to people, they can help people, they can service people, they can enlighten people, you know, they can support people. You know, they can't, whatever it is. And yes, you can. So I, I I just don't want us undermining resources to do that. Virgo in the 10th house, key word, resources. Sagittarius rising, if I see I sleep on another resource, y'all be resourced like a mother nigga. Y'all be having some resources. Y'all be knowing how to get to the resources. You Sagittarius rising, Jupiter first house. Somebody always teaching your ass some shit. You 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 be knowing, you be knowing, okay? You be knowing what's up. Be knowing how to get some information, and that's another thing that Virgo challenges you that you'll experience a lot in the tenth house. I barely looked at my bullets today. That's another thing that Virgo challenges you with in the tenth house: your ability to research, gain information, you know, craft a skill for something in the tenth house. Virgo likes to experiment. You guys, not even health. But different forms of science may be an influence here. Virgo likes dealing with experimenta experimentation projects, building patterns, intrigues, Rubik's cubes, and shit. They like that shit. So Mercury gets is ecstatic, thrives off of those type of things. All right, you got a little Virgo Gemini baby. You got got a little baby. They got Virgo Gemini somewhere in that. Throw them a little Rubik's cube. I'm on here for their ass all day. They're gonna They're going to be fucking that Rubik's Cube up. But anyways, uh, Virgo in the 10th house, y'all. All right. When we look, when you get into, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 being in a position to help others manage things, 
you can't stray away from them situations because they naturally manifest to you you be in a position to service others so when it comes into your understanding how to get to the resources or understanding that okay i know how to build the blueprint this in the tenth house but it's going to take me to carve this a little bit more learn a little bit about this more you know mercury's dealing with that sense of curiosity so the ability and intention to learn more about what you got because you're going to criticize you're going to have that sense of criticism here you be criticized a lot in your life having a virgo in the virgo in the 10th house all right on top of what you already do to yourself about aspirations so that's already part of the obstacle the psychological obstacle with this that comes with this chat with this square but you know uh that ability to sharpen whatever you're working on okay you know that only builds confidence with what you're doing right and refrain and, and now you're not dealing with such a harsh critique you know how much time you know how much incentive you placed on yourself to learn something to, that you were to learn how to do some do more of something that you were already intrigued about that you already knowledgeable about knowledgeable about so you know virgo just is mutable here so you know you got to learn how to learn from others and whatnot so it's like the capacity to expand, even though we talk about Mercury, not Jupiter, the capacity to expand here is very similar to how you need to learn how to how to use what you expand on in your first house. It's just two different ways. The Sagittarius in the first house is learning how to expand from life experiences and being able to use that knowledge with how they interact in the world. That's the overall life path here. That's the overall life path for the Sag rising, right? Understanding its own personal experiences and being its own moral example throughout the, its interactions in the world, right? Natural student teacher right there and, and giving off that mutable fire energy at the same time. But Virgo in the 10th house, Mercury in the 10th, the capacity to be able to learn, soak up information, you know, connect it, articulate it and possibly even be a messenger in different type of, you know, scenarios in your 10th house on top of what you already know, your knowledge, your resources here in the first place. So it's like two of the same thing, okay? Two of the same thing. So I hope I got that across as far as being able to expand on knowledge that you already have to develop the more confidence here, you know, to, to help you reinforce to yourself that you know what you know, okay? Because boy, you're a Sag rising. Don't think your knowledge and wisdom ain't going to be challenged in life. <laughs> All right. If I got any teachers in here that are Sag Risings, you leave a, if you a teacher, because I need other people to know these don't be jokes or like these be real jokes. They're reality jokes. All right. If you got Capricorn placements, we got reality jokes like a mother. But look, if you, if you are, uh, Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising, especially rising, you are actually a teacher. I want to know about them experiences that your ass got challenged them first times, that first week, that first semester, first couple of months of your first teaching experiences. First day of motherfucking class, you 24 years old, 25 years old. All right, students, today we're going to learn about law and division. A little kid in the back, how the fuck you know about that shit yourself? <laughs> your ass going to get challenged. Your ass gonna get challenged in whatever scenario. How you know what you know? And that's when Sagittarius rising steps into their motherfucking shoes and be like, first of all, I didn't experience what the fuck I'm teaching right now. All right, so sit the fuck down. This ain't no shit you're gonna learn in a book anyways, in a textbook anyways. That's why this should sound foreign to your ass. That's why you wanna challenge me. I'm speaking from spirit like a motherfucker. I'm expressing myself from what I believe in, from what I experienced, all right? This ain't all formatted and textbooked for your ass. So this is the natural personal expression when it comes to how Sagittarius is teaching things. But when it comes to the 10th house and we got to, you got the plan to actually make a book, to brand something, we, we got to format something when, it, when we get there. We got to format something, all right? We can't just get on it. We can't just turn on recording and just ramble and be like, all right, ebook done. Ramble for two hours. All right, I think that's good. Fuck publishing and all that shit. So Sagittarius fuck around. Real raw Sagittarius. Fuck around, be like that. Yeah, fuck all that publisher Edison. I'm gonna talk my shit for two hours. Ebook done. All right. Fuck. What, fuck a book need a chapter for? Who idea was that? Now Sagittarius getting to their philosophical shit. Whose idea in the first place created chapters? What was? The, who confused you trying to separate shit? 
That's the problem. That's why everybody be confused about shit because y'all don't know how to get the message in full. Y'all don't know how to just get the whole message together. Y'all separating too much. Y'all boxing shit up too much. I tell y'all, so this is what Sagittarius learn from Virgo. Sagittarius don't like patterns and all this shit. You see how all this shit connect? You don't like patterns and organizing none of that shit. Give me the give the whole word in this motherfucker. Virgo, like you're bugging. If you don't slice that motherfucker pie piece into eight slices. You're, 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 you're moving like some buffoons now. You're moving like some savages. Eating pizza, not sliced up. What's wrong with y'all? I don't want to hear no spiritual philosophy for why the fuck we need to go back to the times of eating pizza. I don't think there ever was an origin of pizza that was like that. I think the motherfucker was always sliced up, all right? Our square signs always got something to teach us, y'all. I'm trying to tell y'all, all right? So... Finding a container for Jupiter slash Mercury in your 10th house and understanding when that, that opportunity for a container is being presented to you. All right. Another thing I see with Sagittarius rises a whole lot of times is when y'all get it, when y'all are in some type of work environment, y'all ability to navigate promotions and navigate the company and all that is, is crazy. And why I believe y'all do it in a more profound way than others or manifest these type of situations where you get into a job company and you able to get promoted and move a little, uh, you know, shift upwards in the company a little bit quicker than others or whatnot. I feel like a lot of that has to do with the fact that because you have a Jupiter rule first house and you have a Mercury rule 10th house. So your knowledge and wisdom or your experience is easily seen. So if you are knowledgeable about things, you are experienced with things, it's not about setting the I mean, it is about part of part of it. Part of the lessons are about setting the intention to be seen for it. But you have to also know that you're naturally seen for these things as well. So I feel like that's why you get into companies like, yeah, uh, Bob. Yeah, Bob been around four years. He know what he's doing. This and the third. Like, yeah, he could go ahead and you could place him in the manager position. And he's experienced. Like, but you may not have this. Maybe other people around you more experienced. But for some reason, your experience is seen. Your thoughts, your, into, your intellect be seen. All right, so I just don't want y'all to shy away from utilizing simple knowledge that simple knowledge that y'all have and owning it. All right, now um, a lot of y'all with Virgo and the tenth house could appear stable even when y'all not. All right, so this is this is kind of related to when I was saying when y'all give off a lot of y'all insight about things, y'all knowledge, y'all guidance, it still is received to others as a sense of management. You know, um. Your experiences are easy to be seen promotion. One thing I see that y'all excel with as well here, a lot of the Mercury influence is, you know, Mercury's a quick learner. Virgo's a quick learner, right? So uh, these people have real flexible characters in general, but they can be very flexible in, in the 10th house space here as well. And um, things dealing with like commentary, Sagittarius rising is, 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 is exceptional. Like, like, sports commentary or like excuse me event commentary but especially they're exceptional at it because they still may have the uh especially if their sun and moon is in like expressive energies but it may be a sense of expression and charisma jupiter upliftment that comes from their natural personal expression in the commentary but their ability to analyze observe the sport or the event and do the commentary or whatnot like that their balance with that is going to be noticed, don't notice very well. So for like anybody that watches sports, I'm trying to think of other things that do commentary, not even, not even, or blogging commentary, like, like simple show. Like I like what I don't like watching the show, but I like watching commentary on YouTube and blogs on YouTube about the shows 90 day fiance. And, uh, what's the other one? 90 day fiance and love after lockup. I think the commentary on YouTube on them shows are hilarious. Like, they're hilarious. I never watched the episode of them shows in my life. But the ability for some of these people to just, you know, analyze the situation, observe the situations, place their commentary, have the humor, still give you some wisdom as to, you know, the toxicity or the, you know, the negative things about the relationship and give a lesson about it within the humor and everything. Uh, those, the, what are those? I can't even see. I got shades. Oh no, you Gucci, you Gucci. Um, so yeah, like 
you guys can excel at that. You guys can excel. It could come so easy for you to give your commentary, give something, analyze, observe something, you know, throw a philosophical approach to it, lighten up, making it make it light for others. Once again, Sagittarius, make it light for others. You know. So great educators in general. Uh um now jumping more into the seventh house too. We got Gemini in the seventh house, which squares here. So you already know what Gemini teach Virgo. You know how to shake and bake, rub shoulders, relate that Mercury some more. All right, start keeping all that Mercury to yourself, Virgo. You want to give your Mercury off only to the intimate people you around and shit. Get up in that space and give your Mercury off, Virgo. You feel me? Get up in the groove and give the Mercury off. Don't try to just keep it all up to yourself, all up in your intimate space. So, AKA, when it comes into Virgo in the 10th house, you know, the capacity for this house to grow, the, the potential for that, for the potential for this house to grow you know, it gets crazy when this person embraces relating their Mercury, you know, getting in the seventh house, being able to learn from others once again and give off what they know to others, you know. But this is a Mercury ruled house, so this also becomes a reason why you get critiqued a lot, you know. You go, you, you got to be able to take criticism from the people you work with too. It's not even about people that may just you know, critiquing your art, your performance, whatever, your higher ups, you know, people you work with, that's the most important. That was really the most important, okay? And with a Gemini seventh house, what I just said, to somebody that's not a Sagittarius rising or is watching this video to understand somebody else, you may not feel that as much. But when you have Sagittarius in the first house, you have Gemini in the seventh house, you don't know what type of people these people people bump into. You don't know what type of people these people be around. You don't know what type of reckless, unstable people they, they manifest in their lives at times that reflect, you know, the dark side of themselves and what they can manifest into if they allow themselves to stay in environments around unstable minds, emotionally unstable people, mentally unstable people, people in unstable lifestyles and relationships. They attract these scenarios in their life, all right? You have to understand that this this Sagittarius Gemini axis ain't no game when it comes into people. So so much, so much uh uh different series of education coming through relationships, all right, wherever that axis falls in your chart. So this is a personal relationship life, all right. So this has a lot, this plays into a lot in the tenth house. You know, the people that Sagittarius rising surround themselves with, but you know, just understanding that uh their ability to learn and get critiqued on by the by the people that they work with and they're in unison with or whatnot, that's very important. And being able to decipher, you know, what type of relationships to value or hinder what they're trying to do in the 10th house. Because it could just be a, it could be a lot going on in Gemini and 7. And it's an air sign here. It's an air sign here. So when I say there's a lot going on, a lot of fruitful things can happen with relationships, networking, collaborating, collaborating with others. But being too open and lacking discernment can lead to a, whole, uh, a shit show at times in the seventh house. All right. Um, you guys may be very, a lot of you guys really like culinary arts and cooking. That's another thing about y'all. Random, random. All right. Uh... All right, I think I got a. That's I think I just had a couple of notes in my phone because I ran out of space on the board. Okay, I pretty much mentioned everything that was on that. Um, the extra notes. Last thing, anything helping people improve people's technique with things. Another things you guys uh, want to embrace situations to uh, be in if they fall in your lap. Helping other people improve their technique with things. If fighting technique, cooking technique, art technique, rapping technique meditation techniques, yoga techniques. If the motherfucker got a technique, you better show him how to get the technique in, all right? Because maybe some fruits waiting for y'all. My beloved Sagittarius writers, great educators, very upliftful. So I don't even know that's, <laughs> I said, it's late, y'all. I said uplifting, very uplifting. And man, when y'all find this first 10th house balance to mix that, Jupiter warmth, upliftment, warmth, but with the ability to articulate things technical, to help technique, to help bring a sense of management, you know, or pin, because you could educate others and you could educate people. You ever had somebody educate you and you feel like it was too broad 
to a point when you left, you feel enlightened like a motherfucker, but you like, damn, I can't really dissect specific things that motherfucker was saying. So it, it, Mercury can do that. Instructions get more technical. This is how we heal. All right. We need to tweak things in our lifestyle. Okay, Jupiter could be a little bit, it could be a little floaty with its knowledge and wisdom. All right, you fuck around. You ever go to church and your pastor just uh, catch the Holy Ghost and then done read? All right, y'all go to the book, read chapter verse. Ah, uh, uh, read the John. Now he's supposed to go off, give us what that word meant, break down the lesson, probably connect some life experiences. But sometimes pastor catch the Holy Ghost too quick go off into performance mode before even deciphering the message. Start mixing a bunch of other motivational phrases within the shit, within the shit. And it ain't, you still ain't broke down the word, but I left church upliftful. Uh, what I said, upliftful like a motherfucker, right? Can't really break down anything about the word though. Has God ever let you down, y'all? All right, all right. Now, so hopefully that was a good analogy, y'all. All right, it's the Lucky Libra family. Y'all already know. It. Matter of fact, I'm bugging. Last thing, last, last thing, last thing, y'all. Last thing. Know where Mercury is, guys. Know where Mercury is. You really trying to get some more to meat and potatoes of what's destined for you, what you may have spiritually designed for you, not what may, what you've spiritually designed for yourself to catch an influence for, to help you navigate your 10th house, building a social status, building some form of st stability in the world through who you are. Uh, know what house Mercury is in. Whatever house Mercury is in, you are very analytical in that house. You are very informative of, of that house. You've developed a lot of conversation in that house. Even when it comes into things you may want to do in a, from a group aspiration point of view, it may even be able to pick, be picked out of this house a lot. Um, people out of this house. Uh, and um, not only is your mind always in this house, your ability to connect ideologies, experiences from this house and attach it to your 10th house or wear it in the 10th house because it may be already be something that you're associated with. Bo boy, boy, that's how we get to the meats and potatoes, all right, of what's really going on. But just understand this video is the breakdown of everything that may be experienced while you're trying to concentrate on that energy, which once again, you aligned for yourself, all right? So that's just getting into the house, Lord. Yeah, I know those is important, but it's the Lucky Libra tuning in and out. Peace.